You guys seem to really like this subject, so we're gonna talk about it. Talk about what? The new design that I have for IFT3 where you can see the re-entry with the plasma? No, talk about the idea that you could pay SpaceX to take a ride to space. Now SpaceX is getting into the space tourism game. Well, kind of. I don't really think this is gonna be anything that our budgets can afford. Oh my God. I am never gonna financially recover from this. But SpaceX revamped their website and now apparently you can book a flight to space with them starting this summer. So I made this as a reel on Instagram and it got over 55,000 views, which surprised me because I don't have a huge presence on Instagram. So I feel like a lot of people are interested in this topic and just this idea of, wow, now you can actually book a ticket. Uh, it's a very expensive ticket, but you can book tickets with companies like like Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, and now SpaceX. But like, how much are these tickets? Well, I'm gonna tell you. The point is that back in the day, aviation used to only be for the mega rich, and that is so hard to believe now. For example, listen to this excerpt from the Air and Space Museum. From 1927 to 1941, flying was loud, cold, and unsettling. Airliners were not pressurized, so they flew at low altitudes and were often bounced around by wind and weather but flying was also very expensive. Only business travelers and the wealthy could afford to fly. A coast to coast round trip cost around $260, about half of the price of a new automobile. But despite the expense and discomforts, each year commercial aviation attracted thousands of new passengers willing to sample the advantages and adventure of flight. So just to give you a reference point for what I mean by expensive. Oh, you'll never know the meaning of travel comfort and convenience and economy until you've taken a trip on one of these modern airliners. It's the new tempo of American life. It's the new way to go. Granted, you might think plane tickets are expensive now, depending on your budget, and they can get pretty pricey, but nothing compared to how it used to be. And I think we're going to see the same thing with space tourism, where it's gradually going to decrease over time and we will have more access Hopefully sometime I can go in my lifetime and it won't completely break the bank. Now, I wanted to ask someone who has more experience about this than myself. I asked Eric Berger, who is the author of Liftoff, what he thinks about this very expensive space tourism. You know, this is recent news. We see that SpaceX updated their website. You can now inquire to join a mission, get a seat. Much more expensive than Blue Origin. Is that just crazy to have covered SpaceX from so early on and see that now... You know, you can, if you're super mega rich. It has come a long way. I think it will be more interesting to me to see how many takers they get, if any, because I'm not sure how robust that market is. It hasn't really been tested, but, you know, we haven't seen any other private Dragon missions other than Axiom or Jared, Jared Isaacson's missions. And so I don't know whether that's they haven't had the capacity or whether there just isn't the demand. I think it may be the latter, but but we should find out in the next year or two. Yeah, I, I haven't been able to find a price point for it. Um, people are speculating maybe like $55 million. Do you know anything more about what that seat could actually cost? It, it, it is funny because one of SpaceX's main things was, was price transparency, right? With the Falcon 1, with the Falcon 9 at a time when there was no transparency. But now in the human game, <laughs> they, don't, they don't do that. $55 million per seat sounds about right to me, um, but I don't know the exact price. And that's far more than Virgin Galactic or Blue Origin, right? Like, well, yeah, but those flights are about you know joy rides, 180 seconds of weightlessness, and right. you go up and come down. And this is you know you get the full rocket launch, you get days of weightlessness now, and then and then you come back, and and it's, so it's an orbital mission versus a suborbital mission. There's really not a whole lot of comparison, and that's not to denigrate the suborbital mission. I think if I were to go to space. I probably would want to go on a Blue Origin spacecraft um, because that's a pretty attractive flight profile to me. I was going to say, if you had to pick between the three, I mean, I guess they're not apples to apples, but. I mean, if I had to pick, I would take Starship to the moon. I think that would yeah. be, I'd want to go to the moon. By the way, guys, YouTube revenue has been down significantly. So I would appreciate it if you would listen to the sponsor of this video in this quick ad. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods 
from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel at any time. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. For example, Terra, the knife in the Terra box is made by Bare Bones based in Salt Lake City. Every month they introduce their members to cool new products based on a preference quiz they fill out. They've got awesome clothes, cool stuff for your house, camping and cooking gear, basically just high quality stuff in every category. And they now offer a new membership program where you can get really great deals all year round. I'm talking like 30% off or more sometimes and it's totally free to join. You can also preview your member shipment before it's sent to you. You'll get a customized selection of products picked for you and before it's shipped, you can preview what's inside. Then you'll decide if you'd like to keep it, swap out products, or skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay what you want. The box lineup is also constantly changing every month. So here are two boxes that I custom selected from Bespoke. You guys know that I love to climb, ride my bike, and go for walks sometimes after dark, which is why I got the Beam Box, and it is the best place for a flashlight on your forehead. From evening hikes to midnight runs, this powerful and convenient headlamps makes the dark a place to play. It's lightweight, rechargeable, and really, really bright. The MH10 uses one big LED to project a powerful beam with maximum brightness of 600 lumens. And if you wanted swappable light color filters, it has those too. In terms of battery, you're looking at a maximum output of about 120 hours on a single charge. Then you can just recharge via micro USB and you'll be back up and running in no time. I also got the Wabi Sabi box. Y'all, I'm about to go to Japan and I love sushi. So you know, I'll be making sushi at home using this kit. It comes with two chopstick rests, two pairs of chopsticks. You have a soy sauce dispenser, two dipping bowls and genuine Japanese soy sauce. It also comes with a sushi plate for two, much like you would see in a fancy restaurant. So I'm excited to use both of these products because they definitely fit my lifestyle. To get a free mystery gift with your first membership purchase, click the link in the description and enter Ellie Gift at checkout or go to bespokepost.com slash Ellie Gift. And of course, thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. So let's start with Virgin Galactic, then we'll look at Blue Origin and finally SpaceX. But Virgin Galactic is going through some changes. So they're coming up in their final commercial flight. Galactic 7 is scheduled to take off June 8th with three private astronauts from New York, California, and Italy. A research astronaut is also expected to join the crew. And this will be the company's second commercial flight this year, the last taking place in January, and the 12th overall. So what are they going to be doing moving forward? Well, they're going to be focusing on the Delta-class spaceship which they hope to have commercial service for by 2026. The Virgin Galactic Spaceline President Mike Moses is quoted saying, with this approach, Virgin Galactic is moving from a prototype to a production model of developing spaceships, shaving years off the development timeline we saw with VSS Unity. So the Delta class shops are being built to fly eight space missions each month, with 12 times the capacity of their current ships. And they say the final production of those ships will take place in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, if you were one of the people to make a Virgin Galactic spaceflight reservation, you would be launching from Spaceport America in New Mexico during spaceflight astronauts will experience a 90-minute journey, including a signature air launch and Mach 3 boost to space. The spaceship gracefully flips while astronauts enjoy several minutes of out-of-seat weightlessness and breathtaking views of Earth from the spaceship's 17 windows. So as of 2022, spaceflight reservations are a total price of $450,000. You have to do an initial deposit of $150,000 and customers have to make their final payment before the flight. So there was a time that you could make a space flight reservation to start the application process, but that doesn't look like it's um, going on any longer on their website. So you can sign up to hear more um, about the future availability of spaceflight ticket sales. But here's a brand new article from Lauren Grush, Virgin Galactic Revenue Falls Short as Launch Pause Looms. So Virgin Galactic missed the Wall Street expectations in the first quarter as the space tourism company is currently preparing for its second and final launch of the year. Virgin Galactic aims to launch its remaining commercial space flight slated as soon as June 8th. The timing of the flight carrying three paying tourists and a researcher to the edge of space 
was delayed slightly after the company found a pin had fallen off unexpectedly during its previous space flight in January. So I like that we know the price of a Virgin Galactic flight, but there's definitely been a pause in space tourism for the company. In fact, they plan to pause flights to keep costs under control until they finish development of the new Delta space plane, which won't debut commercially until 2026 at the earliest. So yeah, I mean, Virgin Galactic was an option. It still can be an option in the future, but it's just not an option right now. And that's going to be a theme we're going to see a lot of when we talk about buying a ticket to space. There's a possibility, but there's a lot of logistical things that make it so even if you have the money, which would be kind of crazy in the first place, um, there's a lot of holdups with with space tourism. So Blue Origin started to do their suborbital hops, and this has gotten a lot of criticism um, because people say it's, you know, a space joyride for billionaires and celebrities. But anyway, they are to resume crewed New Shepard flights after a pretty long pause. Blue Origin announced plans April 4th last month for its first crewed New Shepard flight in more than 18 months a mission that will give an opportunity for America's first black astronaut candidate to finally go to space. The company said the six-person crew of the NS-25 suborbital mission will include Ed Dwight. He was a U.S. Air Force pilot announced by the Kennedy administration in 1961 as an astronaut candidate, the first black person to be considered. He graduated from the Air Force's Aerospace Research Pilot School, but was not selected by NASA in its next astronaut classes. He left the Air Force in 1966 and became a sculptor. And he's in line to become the oldest person to fly in space as he's currently about a week older than actor William Shatner when he became the oldest person to go to space on a New Shepard flight in October of 2021. The Blue Origin has still not revealed a launch date for NS-25, but the announcement of the crew suggests the company will be having that flight in the near future. And in case you were wondering, the other five people flying, just to give you an idea of their careers, a venture capitalist, a French businessman and philanthropist, a software entrepreneur, a retired accountant, uh, and a pilot and founder of a wellness center. So people that really excelled in, in this. Now, this will be the first flight of New Shepard since the NS-22 mission in August of 2022. And that is because a month later, after that mission, a payload-only only flight, so no one was aboard, of New Shepard suffered an engine problem a minute into the flight, triggering the capsule's abort system. The capsule landed safely, but the vehicle propulsion module was lost. We're going to throttle back and then continue on up to space. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way... Uh, There was a pause in those flights. We should be seeing a crude one coming up pretty soon. But how much do they cost? Well, what you pay for depends on who you are. So on these flights, passengers are sent to the lower edge of space, 100 kilometers in the sky. And Blue Origin doesn't advertise price information on its flight reservation page. Passengers say they've paid from zero to nearly $30 million dollars. Industry insiders say Blue Origin's ticket price is tailored to individual passengers based on a variety of factors. Okay, so based on a variety of factors, if you're a celebrity, you're probably getting a Cybertruck and you might get a Blue Origin flight. I said it. So the co-founder of Space VIP is quoted saying, it's not about money. It's about who you are. Your social capital, whether you align with their launch purposes, it's kind of a package deal. Wow. So so already we're seeing a difference, right? We don't have price transparency with SpaceX yet. That could change. Um, but we have price transparency with Virgin Galactic. They're selling that 90-minute ride to suborbital space for $450,000 per seat. So Blue Origin, obviously, it depends on who you are. But we know that in June 2021, Blue Origin auctioned off a seat on its maiden flight for $28 million. So that is more than 100 times what Virgin Galactic charges for a similar experience. Now, as I said, those prices could and should change over time. In 2018, two company insiders leaked that commercial flights would be priced at between $200,000 and $300,000, which was in line with what Virgin Galactic charged at the time. But of course, they've raised their price to $450,000 a seat. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, SpaceX. Even spaceflight on SpaceX's website. No price is listed. But we do have some details. 
Our missions. All Dragon and Starship missions have the ability to conduct scientific research to improve life back on Earth, as well as raise awareness to a global audience. So the missions include Earth orbit, space station, moon, and Mars. We're not ready to go to Mars yet. If you want to do Earth orbit, the mission duration would be three to six days, with an altitude of 300 to 500 kilometers, seating for two to four passengers. You would have 360 degree views from the cupola. And it says that you can join a mission, inquire below, Book your flight to start exploring Earth orbit. Those seats and on-orbit research opportunities are available starting late 2024. Late, later this year. We'll see. Now, if you want to go to the space station, that mission duration would be 10 days. It's too hot for this. That mission duration would be 10 days, an altitude of about 400 kilometers, seating for four passengers, and there's nothing about the cupola. But... These missions are available starting as early as 2025. So it sounds like they have a good timeline. Now, Moon and Mars, we just know that those aren't happening yet. So let's talk about the suits. So they have two suits listed. Your intravehicular activity or IVA suit, and then your extravehicular activity EVA suit. So your EVA suit has a heads-up display and camera. This is active only during the spacewalk. The HUD displays suit pressure, temperature, and humidity while monitoring how long the astronauts will be exposed to the vacuum of space. Now, the IVA has a 3D printed helmet with customized padding houses microphones for communication and valves that regulate the suit's pressure systems. Dragon. The Dragon spacecraft is capable of carrying up to seven passengers to and from Earth orbit and beyond. It is the only spacecraft currently flying that is capable of returning significant amounts of cargo to Earth and the first private spacecraft to take humans to the space station. And Starship, the fully reusable spacecraft and second stage of the Starship system. The vehicle offers integrated payload section, and it is capable of carrying passengers and cargo to Earth orbit, planetary destinations, and in-between destinations on Earth. So it's been speculated that a seat on SpaceX's flight would probably cost $50 million or more. No prices have been listed, but that could change. So comparing and contrasting between the three, I mean, I would definitely go on SpaceX if I could, but we're really like looking at different types of flights. And so I think that the SpaceX one sounds the coolest. You're actually potentially going to the ISS versus just a, a very short sort of hop. Um, even the 90 minute Virgin Galactic. You guys know it. I'm a SpaceX fan. <laughs> And so the idea of flying in the Dragon spacecraft and, you know, going the SpaceX route is really cool. But um, I cannot afford it. But I hope that you enjoyed sort of this comparison. Obviously, space tourism is something that we will be seeing in the future, but it's definitely still work in progress. And that's probably a good thing because we want to keep people safe and you know, this is still a very new thing that we are getting started. Um, it's it's crazy, actually, to think about how much progress we've made and just the idea that someday you and I could both go to space as easily as, you know, flying on a Delta flight. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please share the video if you really want to help me out and subscribe to Ellie in Space. It's free, so hit that button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. I don't really have a huge. <clears throat> That's embarrassing. Saying that this is. Ah! And so, yeah, we've had a pause in Virgin Galactic. So yeah, you, and that's going to be a theme that we see a lot of talking about <laughs> buying a ticket when we talk.